Hello, I'm Tara Brabazon, I'm the Dean of Graduate Research at Flinders University and welcome to Vlog 165. Your libraries, your librarians, your PhD. How exciting is this? Oh my goodness! Um, I have a wonderful guest this week. These are always my favourite vlogs, as you know. And I've got a remarkable librarian with us, the wonderful Mary Filsell. And she is our campus and research services, or sorry, I should say college mm -hmm. and research services librarian. Have I got the title right? Yes. And we're going to talk about that title because it is an interesting one to deploy. So we're going to talk about what that title means. But I've waited all these vlogs to do one of the most important vlogs I will ever do because librarians matter to research, librarians matter to universities, Librarians really are the enablers of citizenship in our society. And I've often described libraries as the cranium of our culture. And indeed, I've described librarians as Jedi Knights. They are Jedi Knights. And indeed, it's wonderful to have Mary with me. And she is probably one of the heads of our Jedi Council. She asked to be a part of, of this vlog series and it's like she might be regretting it today but but she cares deeply about our students and has been so student facing for which we are incredibly grateful and her expertise is so extraordinary and you are so giving of that expertise that I'm just thrilled to share this around the world today with a bit of Bob Dylan work going on here as well so thank you for all that you do on behalf of the OGR on behalf of our students and hi. Hi Tara. <laughs> thanks uh, thanks for having me. It's like, it's really lovely to be here. Oh. So yeah, it's a wonderful opportunity for us. Oh and look I'm sure and again we're gonna talk a little bit about the visibility or invisibility of libraries and librarians in contemporary research and this matters a lot to the pair of us. So have a look at this wonderful woman and learn from her expertise. And look I do want to start if I can with the role and functionality of the librarian, because when I did my PhD, when dinosaurs roamed the earth, the librarians were some of my best friends. I saw them every day, I knew them by name, and we did searches together, and they knew the project, and it was all that sort of you know, close connection. Now, one of the great gifts of, of online delivery of documents is that it's quick and easy, you're on Google Scholar, and oh, it's all happening, and you've got the documents. I think the cost of that system is that librarians are invisible because you're in the matrix and you're making the matrix work and I think there are consequences for that so could you tell us a little bit about what you see as the sort of the contemporary role if you like of a librarian for a higher degree student in a master's or a PhD tell us about the librarian role mm. well um, I'm one of the college and research services librarians so what we do is we work across um, all of the colleges we're a very small team, we're a small group. Um, there's currently five of us, and we're all multidisciplinary ourselves. A lot of us have degrees in various different areas. And uh, what our role is uh, really is to like really help people get the most out of research and the most out of, out of the library resources as well. Because not everyone comes into university or even starts a PhD with a really thorough understanding about how a library can actually help them. Yes, and I mean, that's what we're going to talk about today. And I think knowing that a librarian is an actual person, a flesh mm. and blood and bone person, that it's not just simply you click a button and you get a document and you use it. There are better ways to use it. So it's that fleshing out of that skill set, isn't it? Oh, definitely, yes. There's, there's a lot of tips and tricks that we've developed um, to actually be a librarian. You have time to, to go a lot of study. And it's um, in South Australia, it's a lot of postgraduate studies. So um, to do that, we've actually learned how to really wrangle the databases, how to squeeze every last bit out, and how to like um, get through like huge masses of information in the most efficient way. So we can save you hours. We can save you days, even years of research. Yeah. And we're constantly ourselves researching um, better and more efficient ways to actually hop. See, that's amazing to me. And I can't tell you how many emails I get, mate, from students going, I have all this stuff to read. You know, how do I read faster? Do I need to do, you know, how, what do I need to do with my reading? What do I need to do with my note taking? And I always say, have a chat with Mary, have a chat with the librarians, because they'll help you in the selection and the sorting of information at the start, mm -hmm. which means your reading and your note taking is efficient. 
Oh, definitely. Yes, we can do that. There's many different um, ways to actually get through large amount of information. Like you may just be looking at abstracts, for example. You may not need to read the whole text. Depending on what you actually need through a discussion, we call them a reference interview. You can book one with us. Um, just make, well, basically making an appointment. Um, yeah, yes. we can chat through what your needs are and work out the best way face to face by actually talking to you to work out like the best way to help. Mm. See that, and see that's that's the dream. That was my relationship with librarians. It's a very close professional relationship that you don't have with other colleagues. This is a very special bespoke relationship. So mm. do, do take advantage of this. My thesis, I mean my PhD was done in two years and the reason it was done in two years is I spent a lot of time in the first two months getting the search parameters call at the start with my wonderful librarians. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Now I want to go back to that title because I am interested in that and I got it wrong perhaps for a reason. So it's College and Research services librarian. Could you just talk us through what that means? So you do, do an interface with the colleges mm -hmm. and do you all have specific colleges or do you service all colleges and then research services, what does that mean now? Mm. Well, um, yeah, it's interesting. Um, we have a model that we work within and so um, I myself, I work across various different colleges. Uh, some of my colleagues are uh, medical librarians and they can actually help us. There's some very particular uh, research techniques across the different colleges yeah. and um, across all of us we, we can we can sort of um, cover. Yeah, cover. That's, that's what I was like. Yeah, because well, yeah, I'm, inter all those yeah, areas. I'm interested because yeah. in the old days they used to be sort of subject librarians. Yes. So is it now because of the radical interdisciplinarity of knowledge mm. that, that being an old fashioned subject librarian, even, I mean, even medicine or allied and health sciences, that's yeah. a huge area in of itself. So is, was it a way to cover that? Yeah, it does cover that, which is good. And it also helps us to actually um, be able to look to see, like if you're a subject, if you're in one particular subject, you may not be confined by that subject, you could actually cross subjects yourself. So. Sometimes it's very helpful to have someone who's interdisciplinary for interdisciplinary work. And that's a lot of the way the information is going in the future now. A lot of it is cross disciplines, like you might be mixing screen studies with AI, something like that. Absolutely. So, so that's the type of mindset, like future mindset that we um that we're sort of covering. And I'm just certainly thinking, you know, I mean, medical education is one of those areas that's incredibly interdisciplinary. Science literacy, mm -hmm. science communication, health literacy, these are burgeoning areas internationally mm -hmm. and so it's fascinating to me that that we're, the way we're structuring librarians and library services are moving in terms of dealing with that changing discipline which I love because mm -hmm. in the in the inverted commas old days there was sort of a subject librarian for literature and you would often do undergraduate right the way through to PhD wouldn't you so the cut would be a subject librarian would do that subject at all levels yes that's right um, uh, luckily for us, um, this type of structure actually helps us to just focus on PhDs, Masters by Research, and we also work with academic staff and, uh, and researchers within the university as well. So our focus is at quite a high level um, because we can actually interrogate everything from bibliometrics through to um, the nuances and finding uh, things like grey literature, looking through archives. Um, yeah, so all sorts of different types of research. And, and old mm. metrics is becoming an interesting area as well. So mm. the metrics is, is transforming. And of course, we're needing to do as academics reporting on those metrics as well. So we require your expertise. Yes. So that's see what's happened, guys. It's amazing. Mm. So you've got that interdisciplinary spread, but you're specialist in terms of the top end. Mm. And, and that helps all of us enormously. I didn't know that. Mm. Now, we've already talked about the digital delivery of information and that, that has changed everything and created this accelerated intellectual culture, I think, oh, yes. which is good and ill. Mm. But one third of our students live outside of Adelaide and one third of our students are part-time. So could you talk to our students that maybe can't see you on this campus, mm. how librarianship can operate for you guys in regional South Australia, in the Territory and indeed our international students? Oh yes, fabulous. We can. Um, we have a lot of um, ability to help our students who are off campus because we can take appointments, one-on-one -on -one appointments, have a chat face-to-face uh, -face with you via Skype. Um, we can, if you provide us with your preferred phone number, we can call you and we can do an appointment over the phone as well. So we can still offer a very personalised service and we can still ask those really important questions to find out how we can best help you. 
and um, we can answer all sorts of questions, even if they're things that we don't particularly cover ourselves. We can actually help you find the answers to a lot of a lot of different things that actually are going to help you with your study, especially with your research. Um, so we do that. We also have good old fashioned email, so you can email us as well. And um, we also will be doing workshops in future. We will be hoping to record some of those as well. So we'll eventually have those out. So we're growing our off campus services. That, that's fantastic. And I will take that stuff as I, I move around the regions as well. Just a, a sort of meta question for you as well. Mm. Do, do you think that? There's, I mean, I do think this, so I just want to get your confirmation mm. using your expertise, but I think it's never been a better or an easier time to do uh, a digital thesis. So be in Mount Gambier, be in Port Lincoln, mm. be up in Catherine or Tennant Creek and, and doing a PhD. Do you think the library services are, are rendering that more possible and useful and effective? Um, yes, I think so. I think there's... Um a lot of the ability, especially, it is always good to touch base and actually talk to someone, so keeping in touch with your supervisor is imperative. And also to, I mean, but you can do that over the phone, you can do that by Skype, you can do that through written correspondence as well. Um, but we do have access to a range of data sets, databases, all sorts of resources online, uh, which can be like really greatly beneficial, and you can do a lot of the research, a lot of the research is done online. Yeah. Um, and we can help you navigate those systems because they are a maze and every single database has its own particular little ways that it likes it to does. be talked to. It does. So, and yeah. also, you, what, particularly when we start a PhD or start any new research project, we don't know what we don't know. So we mightn't even know that a database exists. Mm -hmm. So that's where you know, we're going to need the expertise of these wonderful people because we don't know that this capacity exists, so we need to ask the question, I think. Mm. And you have the expertise to answer it for oh, us. We'd love to. Oh, it's fantastic. But th that's great. So for the guys and girls out there, um, off outside of Adelaide, mm. let's do this. They're, they're ready and willing to, to assist you, so let's mm. use it. Oh, and I should Please. add as well, just, just remembered, that if you have um, requests for articles that the library doesn't have, um, you, can, you can request them to come actually be delivered to you. You can have paper copies delivered and you can also have, um, there may be something the library doesn't have a holding for as well, so there's a document delivery service which will get what you're after if you're looking for a particular article, we can bring it in from any library that holds it that we can communicate with and that's a vast network, it's not only Australia wide, it's international. So and, and, and that's fantastic and for example that also works to see a PhD obviously a lot of mm -hmm. the North American doctorates are available online right. as open access mm -hmm. but if a thesis is available somewhere it's also possible to deliver yes. that one as well yes. so that's fantastic mm -hmm. I'm only smiling because Marie Meredith one of our former PhD students in an earlier vlog talked about how fantastic the library was because I think you were sending stuff up that arrived on a Greyhound bus Oh. and was left in the post office for her when she came to this very, very tiny little country town when she arrived. So th that was the scale of the document delivery and she did a magnificent thesis in a very, very remote area mm. of Australia. So what, a, what an achievement that is. Mm. It's very possible. Now, I'm also completely obsessed, as you know, about mm -hmm. information literacy. It's one of my obsessions, my loves. I think it is a foundational belief, not only for students, but I think for citizenship. Mm. What, what's your view on information literacy and do you think that skill should be taught overtly to PhD students or can you learn it on the job? What's your vibe on information literacy? Mm, mm, that's a good question. Um, I'm just, I'll just repeat what I think information literacy is. It's, it's about um, knowing how to find and access and even use information. So information is a very, very powerful tool. But just like learning how to use a pen, you can make a mark, but can you write a word? It's, it's that kind of, um, that sort of concept. My brain just exploded. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yes, so it's, um, yeah, to be, to be literate with information, there's, there's a lot of things that we can help and we can guide with. Um, and it's, yeah, it's, it's a very powerful tool. I think, was it Neil, Ga Neil Gaiman had a great quote, which I like very much, and he said, um, Google can help you find 100,000 answers, but a librarian will help you find the right one. That's one of my favorite quotes. And I've seen that on a t-shirt actually, it's, and that, that's actually true, in a proliferation of, of information, or what is often called an information glut, the issue is how you create the seam, and a seam of quality, because if one goes straight into Google, as a lot of people do go straight into Google, then you've got glut, a lot of relatively low quality stuff, which might get you to a certain point of scaffolding, but how do you know you've found, the, or how to find, how to find mm. the great stuff, which at a PhD, mm. we need to be going there. 
Yeah, especially like what we call now like a post-truth world. Um, there's there's a whole lot of like false news, fake information. We've got tools that can we can give you we can give you a link to. <laughs> we can um, we can help you. Like one tool was fantastic developed here in Flinders University by one of our librarians of the past, and it can help you um, actually work out what what a good website is, what a good sort of source of information. We're just a checklist you go through. It's very simple, but it's brilliant. So we're happy to share that kind of information literacy that we've developed ourselves because we've worked a lot of worked with a lot of people like yourselves and um, we found lots of good ways to, to to really help you find what you need yeah. and what's what's really good quality information yeah. and mm. for me information literacy is everything and it, it scaffolds I think the rest of the literacy so it really really matters and I think probably in Australia it'll become a much bigger deal because there's the fabulous organization in the United Kingdom lilac uh, which is that that's their job they look at they look at information literacy and how we create good citizenship through it so it really matters so start to think about that phrase and start to use the experts in it I think it matters a lot mm. now I was going to ask you a question about surprises if I can because I mean obviously mm. you must get the strangest requests like ever like people doing really surprising things, like things you wouldn't even think of that they're going to be searching for. Could you tell us something a bit odd about, about the job you're in and something weird that's happened to you? Oh, I mean, we get all sorts of very interesting queries. Um, I think as, like, I've been a librarian for quite a while and I've moved in and out of some different, different roles, different types of librarians, and I think I've researched everything from Game of Thrones to um, concrete aggregates. <laughs> See, I'm obsessed yeah. by both of those topics. Oh, that's wow. unbelievable. <laughs> Fantastic. But, yeah. Mm -hmm. but, that, but the diversity of material. That's, so the Game yeah. of Thrones. See, my dream mm. is someone does a PhD on Game of Thrones. I'm seeing someone this afternoon who's doing a PhD that involves a lot of Game of Thrones. Um, yeah, so it's. I get lots of fun too, so it's great because I'm a big Game of Thrones fan. I will find this person. This person mm -hmm. must just be about to start in a couple of weeks. This is incredibly exciting. Yeah. Because yeah. I know we've got a wonderful student looking at feminist readings of gaming. Oh, yes, that would um, be great. Which is, yes. which is fantastic as well. Yes. So, it's all, so as the topics become mm. more innovative, the librarian profession has to become more agile too in terms of multimodality and how you manage different platforms. Yeah, that's right. And a lot of it can come down to how you search for things. So searching strategies, um, all the sorts of things that we can do. I should run through some of these too, so we, We're seeing this. So this is, so this is the Bob so Dylan time, so yes. We'll teach you a lot through our workshops. We can give you research help. Should have done this earlier. Actually. No, this is so, exciting. Um, we can do advanced searching strategies, which we're just talking about now. So we can actually get together and find out the question you're really asking, break it down, and actually work out how to feed it into a database to get what you're after. Now, see, that matters because it, uh, the students are just developing research questions, mate. Yes. So you've got a research question, you think your job is done, but actually the research question then has to lead into information literacy strategies to enable that question. So that's mm. what you're doing there. That's brilliant. Once you have your research question, that's about that's one of the best times to spend some time with us because we will help you get your search right from that from that point. We can like be the most effective we can. I think I think it's one of the apex moments for us. Look, it is. It's when that is. Yeah. And that'll save months of your candidature. Mm -hmm. Months. Mm. It will. It will help structure your literature, literature review. Oh. Or your systematic. Oh, review and gee, and gee, they can be dull too. If they, if they can be done so badly, can't they? They can be well, just. Well, yeah. They, you can you can be spending a lot of time when you may not need to. So we can cut down yeah a lot a lot of time with it because we we'll actually help you structure and have like repeatable results. So there's a, there's a bit of science to it too. Well, the systematic reviews are really tough too. And of course, yeah. if you publish a systematic review, heavy citation of the systematic review. So if you get them right, and of course, mm -hmm. I always say systematic reviews. Mary made a, a front loaded, so you've got to get them right at the start, or else it all goes really cold and dark and problematic really, really fast. Yeah. So, you, if someone's doing a systematic review, you, I would argue you need to see a librarian early, mm. really early, because if you get the parameters wrong, it's just more work. Yeah, it's, a lot more it's work. not going to end well. But if it if it ends well and it's a great systematic mm. review, heavily cited. Mm. Ooh, off campus services. Um, we can do pretty much everything we can do here on site, That's on terrific. campus, uh, and what we can't do yet we will have coming soon. So That's terrific. We can do our document delivery. Send it is available, especially for the people who are a very long way away. 
if you're not affiliated with any of the actual campuses, so if you're not at Tonsley, you're not here at Central, you're not at Sturt, you have access to Send It. Look up Send It. It's excellent. So I will look up Send It, and I'm sure it is excellent. So, so that means for our, our great guys and gals up in the Territory particularly, yes. and then we've got a lot of crew in regional New South Wales and regional Victoria, that's useful. Mm. Terrific. Yes. We can talk to you across Skype or by the phone. So that's our Skype. You and can this book is one great. Of us. You can book us as a Skype appointment. So if you're making an appointment, even if you're off campus, uh, just select Skype. And then we'll know that you want to talk on Skype and we'll make sure that we're that we're ready and not eating our lunch. So That's fantastic. Or eat your lunch. You have a cup of coffee together. Oh, I would they're good with Skype, so that's fantastic. Yeah, we can do oh, that. and this is the links, so yes. that's it. So should I do it? So it's flinders.libcal dot com slash appointments i might try and do a link to that in the information bit of the video oh, as well yes. that's great mate that's mm -hmm. fantastic one of those or you can email us yes. and i put the email address on here too so research librarians all one word mm -hmm. at flinders dot edu dot au you might be about to get thousands of people just going hi i really love your hair too because <laughs> your hair is fantastic so well, yes that's great well that's that's great my, my other colleagues also help we monitor this and they also have great hair can yes. i say oh, as well. we, we all do yes yeah. it's a librarian it's thing. part of the yeah. job yeah that's yeah. right yeah. the glamour the glamour <laughs> well we are part of the glam sector yeah galleries libraries and archives Perhaps. and museums and museums that's right yes it's okay. one of our big things, you know. Oh, now what have we got? We've got https slash 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 flinders.libguides.com slash HDR library induction. So tell us about this. Well, we've got together um, a library guide, which is like a little mini website, and it, everything we've talked about today will be just there one click away. Wow. So, and that's we're going to embed that into your REST program. We are, yes. which is our professional development program at Flinders University. Mm. Mm. Uh, that's tremendous. Yeah, so we thought we'd develop ones uh, wow. specifically for HDRs, just in case you just think, well, I've seen the video, now I want to have a look at the LibGuide and search around myself before I contact anyone because... Yeah, I, I don't know. She was a bit strange, that, that crazy but, librarian. But she so wasn't. But this could yeah. be, again, a scaffolding so that the yeah. time you're spending with our librarian colleagues, you've, you've got sort of a vibe mm. and you're ready to ask the right questions. Yeah, that's it. And you can just have a bit of a navigate around. You can see, like, there's links to document delivery to send it. Oh, great. To off-campus services are on there as well. Oh, I'm um, going to download this myself and you can shortly. Just, you can even book or email us through that lib, lib guide as well. So if you've got to find any spot, this one... We'll just bring you to us and our services. Let's do that. I mean, look, I didn't know that. I've learned something today, and I'm going to go to that quite obsessively. So that's brilliant. That's really, really useful. Oh, we've got more bits of paper. Okay. Contact us all. Um, that's fantastic. Can I, and I say my next question mm. is not dealing with any of that. So I sure. wish we had synergetically done this, but that was a fantastic. We'll just do that randomly forever and ever, you and I. But mm. my next question is not addressed by those, and that is about open access. Oh, yes. Yes. Now, I'm obsessed about open access. It's my particular politics. Mm -hmm. I think we're paid by the Australian taxpayer. The Australian taxpayer has a right to read our research, to be frank. Mm -hmm. And I get a lot of questions from our wonderful students about open access. Mm -hmm. So could you tell us why open access matters mm -hmm. and perhaps particularly matters for PhD students in terms of what they're reading mm -hmm. but also what they're publishing? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Yeah, open access, um, we're... We're very supportive of open access, and so we can um, we can have a bit of a chat to you about that too, if you like. Um, yeah, so with open access, um, yeah, the, the whole principles are really about things being findable and accessible to as many people as possible. What actually happens um, when you're actually searching, looking through databases, those sorts of journals, um, is that those are what are kept behind what we call like a paywall. So that wall, um, is open for a lot of us uh, here at the university, but once you're outside of that point of privilege, you can't always get your information out beyond that wall. And sometimes it's like 30, or 30 American, yeah. 30 US dollars to yeah. read one article. I mean, that's it's, right. yeah. I mean, yeah. that's a huge barrier. Yeah, it's a massive barrier, and it can cost an author like $3,000, is not unheard of, to actually publish something even so it is accessible to, ev to everyone. The university has a few great um, options which can be done. So if you're publishing um, and if you've selected a journal you want to publish, you may still have your work behind um, a paywall. So Taylor and Francis, Elsevier, for example, yes. are clear examples of that. Yes, that's right. Yes. So if you do choose to publish with one of those journals, um, 
Normally you'd have to pay a fee to make it open access, which means it's accessible to everybody who wants to have a look at it, or mm -hmm. anyone who Googles it and it comes yeah. up. Um, yeah, to see that full text. Um, we, we do recommend people doing preprints pre through the Flinders Academic Commons, where copyright allows. So copyright is a big is a big one in that. You can't just publish anything anywhere you like. So you can actually check in with us and ask us for advice to help yeah. with that as well. So if you're thinking about publishing open access, think think about it, have a chat to your supervisor and contact us as well because we can offer you yes. information about how to do that cost effectively yes. or how to do that completely yeah. open, which is where you pay a fee. Yeah, or not, because I mean, I yeah. use the directory of open, I've never paid a dollar to get anything published, I think 98% of my stuff is open access. Mm. I use the directory of open access journals myself, and we've talked about that. Oh, yes, what is yes. it, 66% of open access journals are what are called platinum open access, so mm. nobody pays. The author doesn't pay, and the audience doesn't pay. So as you rightly said, it's absolutely crucial. Mm. And that pre-print, you always have to look at contracts. I'm so glad you've said that. Mm -hmm. People are often so excited to get an article accepted, yes. particularly in the early days, mm. that you don't read the contract about mm. the rights that you're actually signing away. Yeah. So as Mary's rightly said, if you can have a pre-print version, it's often called, is that green? Is that green open access? So, yes, I think so, yes. so, so gold open access is where the, the journal is allowing that through. Platinum is all sides are open access, that's cool. Mm. But when they give you the right to a, the version before, like the Word document before mm. is published, that that can be open access. That's a great thing to do. It is, yes. Uh, and you could you could help them go through that? Yes, yes, we can. It's that same email address. It is the... I think uh, two before. But this that's one. Because this, this will go through to... Research librarians at flinders.edu.au. Yes. yes, and uh, we will redirect that to another team within the library as well, who's a bit behind the scenes. Yeah. And they'll be able to help um, assess, assess the... Uh, hmm. The actual open access part, and we can send it to copyright as well. So, send it our way. We're, we really would love to help. Oh, look, that's huge mm. because uh, there's so many students that you've seen me where they've got caught mm. by the contract they've signed for one of the major publishers, which will go unmentioned at this juncture, and mm. basically they've signed away too many rights. They didn't just because you've got a contract doesn't mean you have to sign all variables within it. Yes. So. Please get it, get advice. Here's a mm. wonderful person. Look at the contract and see what options are available to you. Yes, yeah, and we do workshops on this kind of thing as well. So we do do workshops on like on where to publish, how to publish, what to consider, um, and also places and tools you can use to assess. Um, yeah, if you're if you have a a good publisher or maybe even a bad publisher, which can be called a predatory publisher. Yeah. Yes, mm. um, so the, the blacklist or indeed the gold list as well. So there's mm. all sorts of different mm -hmm. lists, but yeah, predatory, s stay away from. Most of us are getting five or six emails a day. Yes, I get them and I haven't published. <laughs> but you're fabulous, that's oh. why. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's true. Last mm. question if I can, mm -hmm. and it's, it is the meta question about, could you just sort of finish off for us about what, what a librarian can do for the life of a PhD student or the life of a research master student. So what can you contribute to the wonderful people around the world who are, who are watching this vlog? What, what can you do for our PhD students? Hmm. Oh, that's a good question, Tara. Um, well, we, we can offer a range of services to actually really help you navigate the, the world of literature, the world of research. Um, we can help you around, around the ideas of publishing. Yes. Uh, we can help you discuss open access. We can provide a great series of tools to actually help you work out what is what is a good thing and what is not a good thing um, in terms of... And you of, can teach yes, the tools. We can. We can teach the tools and we can teach you to help yourself in these areas. We can also provide guidance and support. Um, we, we also say, you know, you don't have to just make one appointment, you can make many. And, and we're just here to like help you navigate um, yeah, research like within the university because we, we do have a lot to do with uh, navigating these sorts of environments. So, so we can sort of be your... Your guide yeah, on the side. That's right, yes, indeed. See, now, mm. this, this matters to me. That's why we've... I mean, that's amazing. I'm getting all a bit sort of emotional about it and all <laughs> weird. See, guys and gals, what happens in a PhD is you assume the only support you're ever going to get 
is from your supervisor. Mm. And so this, this very complicated dance between you and your supervisor is created that you get on or you don't get on and it changes through the three years. I think one of the healthiest things PhD and research master students can do is have a diversity of relationships oh, with definitely. a diversity of professionals at an institution. Mm -hmm. Yes, the Dean of Graduate Research, our wonderful office, we're always happy to support you. But think about the expertise, the brilliance of this remarkable group of professionals. And you can have very close, very intellectually stimulating and engaging relationships with this remarkable group of professionals. So, so few people, I think we, we get too focused now on the digital documents mm -hmm. and forget about the analog expertise. And so perhaps what today is about is, is getting you all to think about that suite of support that exists for you of which our librarians are really the bedrock, the foundation of that support structure. So Mary, thank you so much for this. I've learned a hell of a lot today. Oh, fabulous. Um, you're, you're amazing. On behalf of the two of us, uh, we wish you love, light and peace. Take care and you rock. Oh, oh thanks Tara. Oh, oh. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a bit nervous. Yeah.